gonna let uh, these guys take over. It's Dan Merkin and Brad Williams. Uh, how you guys doing? Hey Scott, thank you very much for the awesome intro. Um, Brad, how is your audio? The dynamic duo is here. How do I sound? Sounds fantastic. Brad and I are the um, Bo Duke and Luke Duke of uh, the FinTech world. Ready to drive, jump into the General Lee, Brad, and jump some canyons, as always. Taking you guys along for the journey with us on our Q&A Wednesday webinar. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Before we get started, Bradley, would you flip on? I, thank you for raising your hand and telling me that I am aware we have not yet done our disclaimer. Boom. As it turns out, nobody could believe it, but as it turns out, <coughs> Brad, Turns out we are not a registered investment advisor. We are a software development firm and all of our technologies should be construed for educational and informational purposes only, ladies and gentlemen. Please be aware of that. And if you need specific uh, custom account tailored advice, please seek that from a registered investment advisor, um, which we are not. But we do have an amazing Q&A show for you today. You're gonna to be viewing Mr. Uh, Brad's uh, laptop and uh, we're and Brad I'm gonna be giving you like some really cool feedback too. Uh, it's funny before we get started Brad you know like how I, we not only showcase the good technology that we have and, and again I believe we have the best but I also like to tell people to remember we're here showing you names that you should be paying attention to and we've done this all the time because to me that's the two-way street of this walking the walk and talking the talk we're not just like simply software developers and educators we are both in the sense that many of the people involved in trade ideas still participate in the market so that we can continue to create a good technology it's like you know whatever art that you practice you've got to keep practicing it or eventually you get rusty and investing is the same way and Brad you know one of the things I love is that how this year um, ladies and gentlemen Brad and I and some of the other members of Trade Ideas have journeyed into a new realm which we're going to be discussing a lot and not this Q&A but in others and this realm is the realm of actively managing your own 401k and Brad I mean I just want to say personally from my perspective and I only started in like early September, because by the time you showed me how to actually get in through it, if you guys think our stuff is hard, right? <laughs> but, Isn't that the truth? Oh my God, you guys, like, if you didn't know what you were doing, like, it, it would be like a Greek quest to try to navigate this website to ever access your account. But luckily, we, I've got smart people like Brad, <clears throat> and Brad helped me through it. and some other people in Trade Ideas, and we're all managing our own 401k now, using Trade Ideas for idea generation. And Brad, I gotta say, it feels good to be a gangster. Yeah, the again, returns are a lot better than they were when they were. you're just in mutual funds, huh? Oh my gosh, I, you know, being the conspiracy theorist that, that I am, and I'm not gonna get into it, because I don't wanna ruffle anybody's feathers, but I gotta say, mutual funds have got to be the biggest scam on the planet. And you know there's a lot of them. I guess in a competitive race with insurance, but uh, what do the mutual fund guys do? Anyways, guys, so that's a very exciting thing. We're gonna be talking about it later, but before Brad begins and we switch to his laptop, uh, to his screen, I'm simply trying to say is that please keep an eye on the names that we will be discussing in this Q&A, because we're gonna be trying to show you not only cool technology and software, but the way that we try to turn this into a asset that continues to feed you so all right, well, i mean every every single day right you're introduced i know i'm introduced to new companies and it kind of spurs me to do a little bit of digging to see what they do and you know it's just it's interesting because you're not coming across the same names every day that's right and and, and we're and we're trying to do it now also where we want to have this technology serve really the active and uh money manager but not per se for day trading purposes, right? When we are trading in our 401ks, which are a little bit bigger than, you know, like a 
a $50,000 account, you don't really trade the same way, right? You're really kind of focused on big percentage moves. Yeah, kind of like um, swing moves, really. You know, it, for me, I know personally, I do a, a kind of really a combination of day trades, swing trades, investments, and, you know, just kind of actively managing it all. Well, I think we're going to... Uh... I, I think we're going to show a lot of people that there's so much more excitement to come. And, and again, part of it will be through the names that we showcase. So let, let's rock and roll. All right. Well, we were selected for the fourth time on the Inc. 5000. Uh, we do expect to be on it again next year on the fifth time. And it's a pretty uh, incredible feat to do that that many times in a row. And um, yeah, we're 17 years in business and we're just starting to do some great stuff. All right, let's just get rid of the uh, presentation, bring up the software. It's really an interactive presentation. It's been a long time. I think it's almost been a month since I've done a, a Wednesday afternoon webinar. So um, I'm here to show you my desktop, show you our technology and interactive, like I said, ask some questions and we'll focus the tech on uh, the direction that you're interested in. Uh, this is my desktop. Trade Ideas is available not only in an application, it's available on the web. Uh, in a very similar type of dynamic application. I've got it open right here. So you can see, you know, it's the same type of free floating windows. You can pop windows out, you can go through the channels, you can create your own strategies, and then you can share them between the applications. And maybe you're on your iPad on one of them, and then later in the day, you're on your computer and vice versa. So it really does give you tremendous flexibility. And as Dan said, you know, I'm not on a laptop, but if you were on a laptop, the web version is also a really good way to go. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So the channel bar really does, for the, we have a lot of new users. We just completed a test drive, and so a lot of new people are coming on board, and I really do want to highlight the channel bar because the channel bar was, it was created by, by the experts of trade ideas. The different channels were curated by the people that really know how to configure these, these different setups and strategies. Right now, we're looking at the after hours channel. So when you click on a particular channel, it'll pop up to the top area. The very top are my custom channels. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But uh, so it's highlighted with the on here, letting me know this is the channel I'm looking at. Things that are moving after hours, after the market closes, what's making new highs and new lows, what's having a tremendous post market volume. So really giving you a flavor of what's kind of happening after the market in a variety of different windows that we offer. Right here on the desktop, I've got some charts, really great charts, because not only are they all linked with the different windows that we have in Trade Ideas, but there's also some additional analytics that we place on the charts, giving you some risk management parameters, both for intraday and for longer term types of trading. So we've got the smart stop that's in there for the intraday um, analysis, and we have the swing exit, giving you a little bit of a longer term uh, look at that particular stock, letting you know where you could expect the stock to maybe go if you were holding it overnight from a uh, support and resistance perspective. Brad, and this is one of those ones, like if you guys can't tell, Brad has an immense amount of lineage, let's call it, uh, on VVPR here. And all those lines are alert price points where he's trying to like, you know, figure stuff out. And again, I think Brad, that's not a common use case to have that many, but the point is that there's something here that Brad wanted Brad to pay attention well, to. Well, let me tell you why. I, look, I, I did it, so I remember why I did it. And it's not necessarily a, a common use case. And it wasn't anything I did today or yesterday or the day before. But when this stock was trading in this particular range right here, this allowed me to set different threshold alerts. If the stock was going to move up a number of pennies or the stock was going to move down a number of pennies, I was going to be notified it, regardless of what I was looking at. So it really freed me up to be able to move on, to look at different channels, look at different stocks, but knowing that if this particular stock had some type of move and it's, I'm interested in being in it, then I'm gonna be alerted to it at that moment that it crosses the threshold and then I can then make that decision whether I wanna be in it or not. But it also kind of makes me touch upon the topic where ladies and gentlemen, if you are new, keep an eye on this symbol because look at just recently, how high did it go? 25. And these stocks are in play right now. Um, Brad, do me a favor. Uh, bring up ENG and explain to people why I cry. 
Yeah, there, I don't know if there's enough Kleenex in the uh, grocery stores right now for Dan on this one. You know, here, here's Dan. He's been talking about this stock for months. I mean, literally months. And he's been in it for months and had a pretty significant position in it. And I think just about a few days ago, was it a week ago that you decided couple, to get out? It was, a, it was like a week uh, or and two I, weeks ago. And I think it was because you were bored or you just were tired. Well, of I got it. Okay. Do you see that big... Well, it's the the beauty of this chart is go back. Notice where it started to go. No, 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 no. The where you were before, as you were, right there. Look at the green right there. So that's when I started to want to get into it and get in. And I got in a little bit, and then it burned me. <laughs> and, then it burned. and then I and then I tried it again, and just nothing was going on, and. I got bored at like a right around the election. That I got out on the fifth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know that's pretty significant when you have twenty thousand shares. shares of something like that. You know that kind of move up to four. If you were to be so savvy as to actually exit at that point, maybe it's still going to go further. Who knows? But well, that's the yeah. point too. That is the point. But. but but the what, the reason Brad and I bring this up is that our technology focuses on these moves. We 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 talk about them all the time, ladies and gentlemen. I think we are the best at discovering them, and which brings me, Brad, to another one that I wanted to showcase. Since we're sort of on these, we just took, covered EN, ENG as how big these moves get, hundreds of percent. That's why you're here. We're going to bring them to you. But I want to also point out that there's this other potential type of thing going on. And if you can do me a favor, Brad, bring up AUTO. I happen to be in that. So, and so am I. And you and I are positioned where basically for us to exit, it would really have to make new lows. Well, I don't know if right. I have to get a price of you, but I clicked on my brokerage plus position and you see my price is 275 right here. And you can see when I got into it, which was yesterday. Right, but look at the swing exit. And by the way, tell everybody what is the swing exit and why is it important for people to have that as a game plan metric? Yeah, so when you're sizing yourself, getting into a position like this, for me, I use it as a, a factor to go, okay, if this stock actually goes down to this price point, which is possible because that's the, the support level here, how much am I gonna lose? And you know, what? how do I wanna size myself accordingly? And so that's where I use that particular um, and, I, and I typically scale into a position, so I'll put on some size, and if it continues to move in my direction, I'll, I'll step it up. Sometimes I'll put it on as it's coming down, but usually I, I use, use that as the real support level, and if it breaches it, I'm really not interested in the trade. But for all the new traders, too, remember, every single stock, and go back to ENG real quick, Brad. Every stock has a swing exit, which I... And it actually touched it, by the way, Brad. I think that's why I got out because I was kind of like annoyed. It was drifting upon the swing exit area, and so. I, and then, and then, and then, by the way, the, the, what I didn't do, what I didn't do, was set the alert. Very embarrassed, okay? Because um, because this is part of something that you and I talk about all the time, right? Which is, if you're not setting these for yourself on things that you're interested, who's going to do it for you? All right. I mean, yes, we have AI, which is a totally different thing. But on the things that you spot, you also have to have that capability to know that there's a, a proper game plan. I, 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 do you know what this reminds me of, Brad? Since you and I always get philosophical, this reminds me of something that is missed virtually by every amateur golfer, but is probably 60% of a pro golfer's uh, time, which is the pre-shot routine. Very important. They do the same thing, and the reason they do the same thing, so that you can repeat it, okay? I usually know, hey, when I'm out, reset the, like, hey, dummy, get back in price. And I just simply got distracted and didn't do it, but we talk about it here. And, the, and so what I wanted to say was that, for, especially for all the people who are listening in and who are kind of new, the trade ideas, what kind of separates us from everybody else is that since traders and active traders who have been doing this since the mid-90s 
created this software. We play war games with ourselves. Would you like to play a game? That's why one of the channels that we're going to discuss is called that. And the war games are you need a game plan. And the game plan is mathematically set for you for every stock. You have swing exits, you have profit targets, you have the daily kind of comfort level. And so you are able to then navigate every single stock, which brings me back to AUTO, Brad, because I want to show people something very important. And if you can, can you do me a favor, Brad? I sent you a picture. Could you just bring it up on your screen? And I'm saying this for a reason. Mm -hmm. So blow it up a little bit, please. I don't know you if can. I can. It's part of Slack. Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is kind of a view mode that I create for myself, and I'm sort of trying to show you what you guys are seeing. Brad, what's the top chart, the big one? That's well, just the I think these are two monthly charts, are they not? I believe they exactly. are. They well, M M. Okay, then 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 do me a favor. Uh, close that picture. I can create it. Right, just create what I'm trying to say because I want to show people that there's an important perspective to take here. What do you want, daily and monthly? Yeah, daily and monthly. But just take a look at this view mode real quick because you're gonna see something that, the level of potentiality here. Imagine again, getting into something like this, right? And riding it back to, see on the daily, where are you, Brad? You're stuck at six and you think you're killing it, right? This is <laughs> the amateur hour uh, danger zone. Oh, guys. I made 100%, which is, by the way, nothing to laugh at. But when you look at the monthly chart, now switch them, if you could. Oh, you want this one big? Yeah, make it big. Ah. I like how you made that noise. <laughs> um, look at the potential that's happening here, guys. What if you catch that reversal move? Like, again, if you're able to think a little bit longer term, perhaps, right? 3 to 20 is a life-changing move, whereas 3 to 6 is a congratulations good move. Okay, And what we're trying to teach you is trade ideas is designed to help you spot things that are potentially transformative. This is a, do you know why you're here, guys? I mean, if you don't know, let me tell you why you're here. You're here because in the stock market, ooh, See, like, Brad, look at what you're doing. Well, you know, this is uh, this is actually how I found auto. I know auto was an AI signal a while ago, you know, yes. ago, but um, or earlier in the month. But um, I found it through the similar tab because this guy right here, FTFT, just kept screaming through my alerts as something that was making the most highs for the day. And let me, if you pull it up here, let's see. So well, I'm it. going to be have to get that tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm let me just make that five minute here so you can kind of see what it was doing th for the wow. day so it was just streaming right and such a big mover I pulled that up and I'm like okay well what else is what else is moving around and that's when I saw here I was already in it and at this point here but this is how I typically find new you know aside from price alerts and really do like the similar tab it lets you kind of hone into stocks that are similar in the similar sector industry group well this is the beauty of what you're watching a software right that's designed around really the namesake of the company which is idea generation and see it allows you to really kind of freestyle that concept in a way that you're not going to get in too many other places if, if any i mean technologically you're going to get it nowhere but it's that beauty where you see a move on one and again like brad go to for example at sybx real quick the one that's on the most up and down yeah uh-huh so it's the same thing this is like a one-two jujitsu that can be applied to anything right now what's similar let's take a look you know, and you can quickly see, well, did COCP go? This is the exploration process. This is the metadata. It's almost like we're layering good things in such a way that you almost are bombarded by them, but 
in a reinforcement learning sort of way. We're drilling people out of this uh, chasing, wagging their own tail with technical analysis, which we're not against, but honestly, people forget that as soon as you make the trade, all of the lines go out the window, okay? I mean, everything becomes risk management and risk management has a lot of feel to it also. And so what we try to do here is we try to create the whole experience based on the optimum set of feedback loops for risk management and risk initiation. I mean, Brad, that to me is the symphony and the synergy of what Trade Ideas is continuing to bring to the table. Um, and what I love about you pointing out that FTFT and everything else is that the similar tab doesn't have to be difficult, right? Yeah, in fact, it's designed not to be, really. Right, I mean, you understand what it is. It's something that's like it. What else could be going? I mean, that's that thing. It's something like this. I mean, it's a very and, common thing to play sympathy plays, and that's kind of what, what we're going after here. Right, and do me one more favor. Pick up auto, like put auto in here again. Okay, and um, but do me a favor and switch from competitors to price action because I want people to know that there is more than one way to skim the cat. Well, maybe not this cat. <laughs> well, well, maybe not this one. Too specific. Okay, let's pull up any other thing. Yeah, these guys that are really high flyers are are very unique in what they've been doing here. But let's see if we can find something else. What about Twitter? I gotta look at this. Something's wrong. Well, you know, we do get the development build, and that's Brad and I always say that. Is that working? Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I need to go back and look at the price action. I'm usually sitting on competitors, so I. Well, I we need to. Do, we need to do more. We we just launched a new version. Sometimes little stuff gets broken. That's how we fix it. But the bottom line is that there is more than one way to find all these things, and the key here is. Brad, let's go back to since we're again. Well, you were going to actually talk a little bit about more on the channel bar, and I don't want to start yapping and steal your thunder. Yeah, I'll just give you a couple. Um, I mean, we could spend all day on the channel bar, really, but I think a good kind of matter of process is to uh, just familiarize yourself and let's um. Let's go to one of the uh, this momentum channel. I think this is really one of my favorite ones because it's. It has a great multi-strategy window in here, this extreme master blaster. So the multi-strategy is just like an alert window, letting you know of an event that's taking place, but it's like a, an event window on steroids. This one here has five different strategies in it, all looking at different things, different momentum types of moves. And when any one of those strategy <laughs> filters get satisfied, uh, it'll go ahead and trigger that alert. And uh, really a nice way to look at stocks that, and I like momentum stocks, everybody needs to find their own sweet spot of what works for them and what they like uh, to trade. But uh, it's kind of what I learned on and, and what I really like. I don't like sitting in stuff that's not moving. And this really does kind of ensure that the stock is gonna be moving one way or another. Uh, so I really like that. Barry's watch list is a great channel. It's a little bit different than the rest of the channels because it's using a curated list. So every day he's going through and he's looking at stocks that he feels are in play for the next day. And he's putting those into a symbol list and these are really the most simple windows, you know, looking at stocks that are making new highs and new lows, but on the list that he's created and, and really fascinating stocks come through here every day. And uh, in order to, to learn kind of what to do with them in the, in the most efficient manner, at least in the way that he is conceptualized, you should attend the trading room. Just go to our homepage, upper menu has a trading room option. They'll get you in there and you can see real trading taking place using our tech, uh, a lot of really good traders in there, and they're really making calls. They're calling out what they're doing, uh, showing you how they're using the software, and I really recommend that. But this channel right here is specific to that curated list that he creates every day. We've got our uh, AI, and I'll talk a little bit about our AI. I'll, I'll bring it up here, but I want to show you on our Amazon Web Server what you, what you can do not only because it's an Amazon web server, but it allowed me to run a different instance of trade ideas. And I'll, I'll show you why I did that. But this right here is our AI. The Omni AI channel is a consolidation of the three different AI segments. 
Um, and, and you don't really need to know the, the details of each segment, but just at a high level, Holly AI was our very first AI segment that we brought to market. Holly 2.0 has some additional strategies, some additional or different risk parameters on those strategies. And um, Neo AI is, is very unique and different because it has the same strategies triggering every single day. It doesn't run through the combine. It does get up, the strategies get optimized, but you're gonna see the same strategies every day. And um, really they have a lot more volatility to those stocks. So this right here is a consolidated view and had a pretty good uh, day in the AI. Uh, if you were to, to match what, what I did here, basically risking $100 on every trade, so that's based on where that stop is, if you were to get stopped out of every uh, position, you'd lose $100 on each trade. That's how I'm sizing myself into it. These are the appropriate shares uh, that would make it so that if you got stopped out, it'd be a $100 loss. And um, these are the, the, the trades that were called today. Um, looks like it was a 7.4% if you were to add up all the different percentage moves that we had in these trades. And if you were to trade that $100 risk, uh, you would have made $430. And the reason why I wanna bring in this uh, Amazon web server, that's right here. Let me blow it up so it'll kind of take over the screen. Um, this, by the way, is a great way if you uh, are a Mac user to use trade ideas on the Mac. And uh, um, you can use the application, you don't have to use the web version, but with that you get to use Brokerage Plus and a lot of the other um, tools, well, it's really Brokerage Plus uh, that's not available in the web version. But what I have here is let me bring the Brokerage Plus window. And the reason why I have this Brokerage Plus window here uh, on a different server, on a different computer, is because I turned it on at the beginning of the day here to, yes. to mimic the Holly AI trades. And essentially, anytime there was a Holly signal, get me into that position. I, I told it to do it with a market order to risk that $100 based on the stop. And um, this is how it turned out through the day. It managed itself. I didn't touch it. Uh, and this is really the result of it. So I didn't make $421, but it did make $405. And that was with the slippage. Um, I did have re-entries on, I believe. Let me see. And I don't think there were any re-entries that took place, but uh, I did have them on. Hey Brad, so, will you do me one quick favor? I wanted sure. to, uh, I found something that works and it, or at least it should work, hopefully if it works on mine and yours. Will you put LPI back into the single stock window? You bet. And then go to similar and uh, do price action. Okay, so take a look at NMRD. Now, obviously, uh, zoom out so people can see the bigger picture. Is your, yeah, right there. Okay, now go to LPI. Exactly, same thing, just on a bigger scale. So that's really part of what we were trying to do, Brad, and I, and I wanted to say that I've been actually using this a little more, I mean, and it's obvious why the other ones didn't work because they're just so specific, right? Yeah. It's, it's above all the upper thresholds. But these ones right here, I encourage you to investigate them, basically, um, because you're gonna see some, well, like, like bring up ATEC there from X. I'm sure it's, Doing something similar. Yeah, looking pretty high up in this uh, long-term range here. That's right. So the reason I keep bringing that up, Brad, is 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 that it is our uh, goal to bring you away from tinkering in the technical analysis and really being able to quickly sift through the data. Like here's one, like S S Y F Brad, you see it scream uh, across the ticker at the bottom. Notice like we've got data everywhere, right? So synchrony financial, something's going on like as something after hours, right? Probably some news or whatever. But this is where, once again, these price action similar tabs, they really come in handy um, because you can kind of see, well, what could be setting up in a similar way? And that's all. 
And so a little trick a lot of people aren't aware of, you can take this uh, similar tab, <clears throat> tab list, if you will, right click on it and select pop out. You can then turn that into a little top list. Well, how come I forgot that? Now you can pin it and you can kind of keep that. So you don't, you can then, you know, continue your perusal of different stocks, have it full of different things, but you then still have that top list, which you can move over to your other monitor or do whatever you want with it. It's, and then again, you can manipulate the data inside of this grid here. Uh, right. that part, all that stuff is so powerful that it really almost deserves like the higher level education so that people all know it's so powerful, it's so there. And, and do me one quick favor, because we do have so many new people. Um, let, let's make sure we let them know that we obviously, of course, have the full on simulated trading and you should be doing that all the time and very actively to learn how to do it. It's your driving range. But I was just gonna reminding ourselves, you and I, because we haven't been doing the Q&A because of the uh, open house, to just uh, mention that brokerage plus uh, live sim at the very top so that people um okay. yeah so on the the more recent version we've added this button up at the top now you can still get to our brokerage plus window through the new new option here or the tools rather and get to brokerage plus but what we have is this little button here where you can automatically launch i'll close this right now and then you can automatically launch brokerage plus in simulated mode already connected uh, to the simulated server and so this is what would pop up here and then your positions would then populate. So this is Brokerage Plus. We haven't really talked a whole lot about it, but this is your, your interface to send orders either directly to a broker or like Dan said, to our simulated server. And that's what I have being demonstrated right here, which is our simulated trading server. Makes it really easy to really get comfortable with trading before you actually put your risk capital at risk. And um, an example of how you can use something like this right here, if you see a stock that you want to get into, there are a number of ways that you can put that position on and into Brokerage Plus. Probably the easiest and simplest is just use the order entry panel right here. When you click on a symbol, it'll automatically populate this here with the right, with the right symbol that you want. So you have to determine whether you want to put in the number of shares or maybe you want to buy $5,000 worth. You can do that. That's that little drop down right there determine what price you want to put it in at, if it's a limit order or send it as a market and just buy it. It'll then populate inside of your brokerage plus and keep track of your P&L, not only the P&L for today, but from the inception of the position. So again, certainly not limited to just day trading, although you're welcome to do that, but you can retain and keep these positions carried over for multiple days. You know, in this particular case here, you can see I've had well, let me do this. Let me go ahead and bring in a new column here that I don't have, and it's just gonna be my entry time. So I'll pop my entry time over here and I'll stretch it out. When I stretch it out, I'll get the date in here. So I've got a number of different positions. Some are put on today, some are closed out today, some are um, put on this last week, and some are put on months ago, like this X position that I've had and really did have a payday the other day. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, you stay in a position for a while, you do get that kind of pop that you've been looking for. And the simulated trading allows you to really determine what is the proper share sizing that you should put out for yourself. What kind of exposure that makes you feel comfortable that allows you to, to trade it and not be, you know, so afraid when the, the ticks go the wrong way that you're going to be, you know, losing money in a significant way. So it's really important that you, you, you size yourself that's kind of, commensurate with your capital and your own tolerance level. Well, Brad, you remind me of the fact that our simulated mode, so many people don't even have a wherewithal that, well, you know, you can be in multiple positions at the same time and different ones go in different directions and how to sort the data. Like notice how you can say, take your position plus minus, for example, and mm -hmm. sort it by which position is just up the most points. So he can kind of glance and uh, quickly see where his strength is and where his weaknesses are, you know. Um, and there's so many of these data points, right, that just allows you to understand what's really going on and if you even need to take any action whatsoever, that exposure column, do the same thing, resort that. Yeah, this is a, I mean, super important column to me. Um, I want to know exactly what my risk is with each one of these from an exposure perspective. 
what I do when I'm typically looking at this number of positions, and this is a lot of positions for, for some people, but what I usually do is I have this sorted on today's p &L. Sometimes I'll be looking at my winners up top, but mostly I'm focused on these guys down here to see if I want to cut them, if I want to add to it. This is where I'm, I'm worried about these guys here. These other ones, I'm just letting them work. I'm, you know, that's kind of the, the mode that they're in. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not micromanaging each one of these guys here. I'm putting the position on. And if you wanted to, and I, I don't do it all the time, but if you wanted to, you could set stops on here as well. And so let me kind of show you what that would be like. So in X right here, trading at 1444, let's say I put a stop in here at $12. So I'll go ahead and add that. And when I click on it, and I'll bring up the chart here. So you've, I've got my stop right here. And my stop, if I move it around, it says if I get out of the position right here, I'm going to close with a, a pretty significant profit. If I move it around, you can just grab it. And you can see that price changing, the value changing. So if I put my stop right here at $13, but pulls back a dollar and a half, then I'm going to be making this, this significant amount, this $4,500 on that particular trade. You know, if I let this thing come down here below my position, my entry price, which is what, 860, and I dropped it down here, I'm going to be losing $2,059. And that's based upon the thousand shares that I have of that position, the $8,600 worth of that stock. So putting your, your stops on there, and once you do that, you can see what your downside is right here. So the downside here is that from this point here all the way to getting out, I'm going to be giving away almost $8,000 by having my stop that low. If I bring that up, and then you look at this right here, now my downside is 4000 So you could have stops placed in all of these positions here and not even have to look at it. Take a look at what your downside is, and if it's too far away, you can just maneuver your stop to something that's appropriate there or get out of some of your shares so that it's not a size as large. All right, what else have we got? Any questions? I feel like we're pretty relatively caught up. Yeah, so the people are asking about the Holly AI percentage uh, wins or gains overall. It's actually, I mean, a pretty good question, but- Well, we have a good document that we put together. I don't have it with me, but if you wouldn't, if you send an email to info at trade-ideas.com, they will shoot you out the, uh, the link of the performance. Uh, we've got a couple of different performance metrics that we've outlined and be more than happy to shoot that out to you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Brad, I think we're good to go into the finished mode. I'm going to give you one other thing here, guys, a lot of people aren't aware of, and that is on this Holly um, strategy trades window where you see the different trades from the AI. You can right-click on here and you can pull a history. So if you wanted to see what, what happened yesterday, you could just go ahead and right-click in there and bring up yesterday's trades, the, the signals that were called yesterday. Um, you know, pretty good day. But So you can do that, and then you could – you could create a range if you wanted to. Um, take the time frame and you could you can go back a few days if you wanted to, and you could grab you know a bunch of different trades from that. Brad, um, great questions and a good segue too. So there's a couple of things. Um, number one, David Harper was asking, could you really could you close that top list from the single stock window and, and show people again how that how you did that? Yeah, so um, we're looking at a uh, the single stock window right here on the similar tab, uh, on the similar tab, just inside of the grid here. Now, everything in trade ideas is all right-click menu sensitive. So if you're in this grid right here, it kind of knows what the options are. So if you right-click and you select pop out, it's going to pop it into a top list right here. And you can actually see, you know, here's the list, but if you want to see how is this thing created, you can go into configure and there really aren't any filters price and volume here but uh, the reality is it's all based on a particular symbol list and that's how you know it's based on a symbol list of that particular um, sub industry group all right brad another question that was there if you could really uh, do me a favor i'll go to the trade ideas brokerage connection window where people can see what are all the options that we have lined up and then let's just touch base a little bit on the timing of um, the connections. 
all right so this is the development mode so or the development version so you guys aren't going to have all of these right here but, um, i'm going to go ahead and disconnect from i think i should still be able to log into the td ameritrade um maybe not because we've got a couple well, people you know, like you are. But there we are so this is ready this is being tested right now it's being run through qa flushing out a few of the bugs but this is ready to go this is the td ameritrade so i'm thinking yeah, I was hoping it would be ready a week or two ago, but any time now, um, in the next week or two, it should be ready to go. E-Trade, a little bit more of a, a delay, but we're really in the middle of that one. Definitely by the end of this year, um, we'll have that connection ready to go. So um, whether you're connecting to interactive brokers, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, or the simulated trading, you can do it all from here and you can connect simultaneously to multiple ones if you wanted to. Correct. Um, Brad, did I uh, not hear, you know, I'm, since I'm the CEO, I'm always at the private jet level and I'm not always at the coach in the coach meetings, Brad. Uh, <laughs> did I hear correctly that um, the TD Amer wait, no, the interactive brokerage was going permission free? Yeah, so we are in, we are talking with uh, interactive brokers to do that. There are a couple caveats that need to be done. One, we would have to not use their trader workstation uh, interface and connect to them in a different manner. But that's all very feasible and something that um, we do have in the works. It'll be happening after we do the E-Trade integration. Um, but yeah, that'll be moving to a, a commission-free alternative as well. Yeah, that's going to be very good. Now, uh, Randy, uh, this question about a Schwab connection. Well, here's the way that would ever happen. Because we are already connected to TD Ameritrade, once that gets going, our biz dev people will reach out to Schwab. I mean, I don't know if Schwab is so big, I don't even know if they ever, you know, do anything. Because, again, just how big they are. But certainly, um, since you have an account at Schwab, you might have more TD Ameritrade access. But I will say, now we are talking about um, brokerage plus integration and automation, being able to send these trades. We do have great external linking. So if you're not a connected broker inside of brokerage plus, we do have this tool, external linking. And with this tool right here, um, configured properly, it's pretty simple to do, um, you can go ahead and set up your brokerage platform to link with trade ideas so when you click on a symbol here not only will the trade ideas windows update but the uh, order entry panel the charts the news the different windows that you have inside of your brokerage platform would also update so yeah it's uh, it's nice to have it integrated for sure but there are ways that you can really use the technology to your advantage um, in other fashions as well so there are other questions about TD Ameritrade. And guys, once TD Ameritrade is connected, you'll be able to do everything on it that you can do everywhere else. You can do automated trading. You can do all the all full functionality. So the only reason it's not Brad sees it because he's on an advanced development version, which is like the version that we used to actually test. We are sending live trades through it, but it's just going through Q&A. And when it will be done, it will, we're going to have a big promotion and, and uh, um, launch. And again, we're shooting uh, for it as soon as possible. Now, E-Trade, as Brad said, before year end, um, E-Trade, TD, like probably within a week, I would say. That's how close we are. And yeah, once you do that, you just, uh, I, I mean, from Brad, is there any, like, Obviously, TD Ameritrade with their API, do you just log in with your, like, I, haven't, I haven't done it on this. Yeah, so with TD Ameritrade, it's pretty nice because it's a, it's such a super clean login system where we're create we're putting a cookie on the computer and that cookie's lasting for 30, right now I think it's 45 days, we're going to move it to 30, but um, for 30 days. So essentially, once you've done that login to your TD Ameritrade account once, then for the next month, all you do is just come up here and you click that and you're connected to it. So AJ, uh, he asked about E-Trade and Strategy Scanner. So guys, um, for a great question, for all of you that didn't know, Trade Ideas was or might even still be embedded inside of an E-Trade platform, and we've been there for over a decade. But these guys, I mean, they, they really never put it out there to the customer, unfortunately. But we, we have 
like well, somewhere it's, five. It's a 12 year old version. And when we, we put updates together at least once a week, right? I mean, so we've yeah. been innovating for that 12 years and, you know, we've flown past what they've had, but they had some great core tech, right? They gave you the alerts and, you know, it had the alert. Well, it looks like though they've turned it off for some people and I would call customer service and complain, complain, complain. But of course, you can always come to us. We're still here. Yeah, and take advantage of our um, nice holiday discount that we have right now. And, yeah, this uh, is a great time to to switch and come on board. I mean, guys, this is what happens when large companies like Morgan Stanley buy companies like E-Trade. And again, E-Trade was already, a, in our opinion, a little bit management cuckoo because we've been with them for 10 years and we've seen four sets of managers come through, you know. Hmm. And I think each one of them tried to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> it was harder than yeah. that. Yes, you get entry and exit price points with trade ideas. With the automated trading, it will do everything for you. But the idea is that some, depending on your own risk preference, right, you don't want to necessarily exit every stock simply because the computer is by default set to do that. I believe you can switch that off too, right, Brad? You can just get in. Yeah, no, you can, well, actually not. Right now you have to manually shut it off. Once you get in, you just kill your stop. But we are changing it a little bit. We're changing it so that we have um, the aggressive mode available here. Um, when you're configuring your automated Holly right here, let me show you real quick. So when you're configuring your Holly to run this automatically and you enter in your long trading instructions, right now we have conservative, moderate, and best of. We will be having aggressive replacing this best of conservative or moderate, and that would be the scenario you would use to not have any stops in there. Okay, um, I want to answer Eliana's question. Um, will you go to our momentum channel? Yeah, sure. So this is a channel that is looking for what we define as momentum and momentum is physics. You know, it's a force in the direction of the upside. I believe, right? Momentum here, we're doing upside momentum, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah upside um, momentum. Right, and Ileana asked like, well, how would I know when to get in? So these channels give you ideas and in this particular case, Brad, uh, click on just one of the stocks that you don't have all, you know, uh, like click on one of the ones in, uh, yeah, without like RM, RMG is perfect. Okay. So, Ileana, one of the ways that you could get in, and if you, Brad, if you can zoom uh, out in a little bit on, uh, yeah, on this chart, no, uh, the other way, sorry, the other way. Yes. Um, is this, uh, oh, because it's at 1563. It's gapping up after hours. That's why I, I'm going a little crazy. Okay, sorry, pick another one. There's the, the, the just not one of yours, but not that one. How about that one? Oh, that, that's fine. What are you looking for? Okay. No, I'll show her exactly. So zoom in now just a little. Okay. So Elena, do you notice that there's a line called a smart stop and, and make it so she can see the profit target too? Right there. Okay. Profit target, smart stop. So what we do here is for any stock, we give you a what if scenario if at the moment you look in it, where you should put your risk parameters. We cannot tell you for every single stock at this point whether we would get in it or not. That's what the AI is doing with its own technique and symbolist. But if you visually like what you're seeing on one of the stocks, you enter and it gives you the feedback of saying, well, if I were you, this is where I would kind of manage my risk. Does that answer your question? Do you see what I'm saying? But I will say, so we pulled up one symbol here, NGVC. It's at the end of the day because that's the most recent alert. But I popped that window and I duplicated it and I set it to look at just this particular symbol. And I'm going to scroll back here. 
So I can see here that at 8.04, let me kind of zoom in here. Had you been watching this window right here at 8.04, at this point right here, when it popped through this particular previous resistance point, that was your signal. That thing moved, you know, from almost $15 up to $16.60 right here in a very short period of time. So that's, it, it's hard to say what is your entry price. It depends when you're looking at this particular stock and you get this signal and you pull it up and you make that determination. But from that point right there, the different smart stop would be different, right? It's different now because I'm looking at it at the end of the day. But had I pulled it up at this point right here, it would have given me a smart stop probably right below the low of the day right here. And that would have been my intraday risk parameter right there. I'd say, okay, if it drops below that, you know, all bets are off and maybe this isn't the, the idea that I wanted. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna jump back uh, up for a second and uh, and I'm gonna add, ask, answer Brad Miller's question. He was just saying, you know, what are, what is he looking at? And I wanna go back to that question because everybody says that. He uses think or swim. What you're looking at is the next level of idea generation. It's not about cheap stocks, although we have ways to find cheap ones or expensive ones. It doesn't matter. This is a server-based technology that focuses on, hey, take a look at this. Hey, take a look at that. Hey, take a look at this. Assuming that you have no idea what you want to look at. Nobody else does it this way. We're the only ones that do it. And as a result, we, again, if you look at, there's so many different channels, right? Channels are just like your Netflix or cable, different things for you to look, depending on what you want, something for everyone, and including the fact that you can be like YouTube, where you can make your own channel. Brad, just do a quick, uh, let, let's leave the tech part before we finish the, the Q&A with what you're showing there. Okay. Well, I just went, where did I go? I went to the penny movers. You mentioned penny. So no, I, I'll say the channel bar, meaning that, by the way, guys, you can make your own. You can customize okay. it. So in this little gear spot in the upper left-hand uh, corner, this is where you can customize up to five different channels. And these channels can be complete workspaces. It could be a complete multi-monitor layout, like I've got right here. It could be one or two windows. You know, and this is kind of my go-to layout right here. And honestly, it's really a kind of a, a combination of different windows from different channels. You know, certain windows that I really, really like, I've kind of brought together into a, a unique layout that I use here, where I've got my derived multi, um, my derived data stream, this multi-strategy window that's got like 20 different strategies in it, always giving me ideas. If hey Brad, let me ask you something. Since you're so cool, would you be able to copy this layout to the cloud and put it in the chat box for everyone so they can I, see for those that have it you can I see can't. Brad has done an immense amount of work here but we're going to show you how easy it is to just support it out yeah so this is the cloud link that i have i could have saved it again right now but I, i've already got it as my uh, my channel here so i just went into it and i'm going to copy it i'm going to put it in your chat Somehow, if I can find that. There we Chats go. at the very bottom. Chats at the very bottom. And so I just dropped that cloud link in there. So once you have that cloud link, all you need to do, and you can do it a couple different ways, but I like just going to the channel bar here, my cloud. Once you copy that link, it's already in your clipboard. And if it's in your clipboard, it's going to automatically populate down here in the bottom. And all you need to do is hit load. And once you do that, I think I have a pinned window back there, but once you do that, that layout's going to populate on there. Hey, Brad, um, Todd uh, has a very good question. I don't know about the answer uh, myself right away, but he was saying that he, for whatever reason, has multiple accounts at TD Ameritrade, and he trades the multiple accounts. Would he be able to do that with Brokerage Plus? So I... <laughs> I don't know 100%, but I will tell you that with interactive brokers, and I'll find that answer out. With interactive brokers, we do allow multiple accounts uh, inside of Brokerage Plus. So if I was to uh, pop so it then in, we have that, and we account have. Tab, you'd have the multiple accounts right here. And we also have the ability to allocate it so that you can allocate um, your trades all either to a single account or to multiple accounts. Right, so uh, I'll find out about. I'll find out about. Uh, was that TD Ameritrade? That, yeah. Yes, TD Ameritrade, out. and uh, I feel like if we did it for interactive, we pro well obviously we have the. Well, it's all about whether they allow it, and so that's right. the reason I'm being a little reticent about saying whether we do it or not. Um, if yeah. they allow it, it's, 
it's in there. So. Well, right. Michael mm -hmm. Ross uh, knows. So, all right, Brad. Let's. I, I think we're good for this one, guys. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to start on the back to the PowerPoint where we sort of close um, close things out. Pepe. Pepe. We showed you. Uh, various trading room. Um, if you're still kind of window shopping, or even if you're already a subscriber, we highly recommend engaging in various trading room because it's a great uh, user group and a meritocracy that Barry, who's a team member of Trade Ideas, Anderson, is a fantastic moderator who helps people all the time and is just, again, he's there consistently doing what he needs to do. Highly recommend it. We do ebooks. The last one I think we did is on earnings, and it's been earnings season. And the one we did before was trading short, which always reminds me, Brad, at this time is when I remind people in simulated trading, what a great way to learn how to trade short without, if you haven't done it before, and really learning the market the right way. I wish somebody would have taught me that when I started. Would have been a lot cheaper, wouldn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, and someone was asking about the support. So this is an important slide here, ladies and gentlemen, because we are unparalleled in our education, aside from the fact that there are a plethora of videos on our YouTube channel that I highly recommend you go to and check out about every aspect of trade ideas from beginning to the advanced, how to set up formulas or how to just open up a window. Really, virtually anything you need is there. But furthermore, we have much like this Q&A where myself and Brad interact with uh, <clears throat> customers who can come or not, it's up to you. We have education continuous all throughout the day and to schedule yours, go to trade-ideas.com forward slash live. <coughs> Happy Turkey uh, Day, everyone. We have a promotion today and it's 25% off the first month or a year off of Trade Ideas for Thanksgiving, which we all hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving with your families and really uh, what a time to be alive. Of course, you guys are a venture capital. We are grateful for that. Um, don't listen to that promo code. We just didn't adjust the slide. Um, the proper one is the one you just saw. But um, this, I, Brad, I love this slide because it really gives people perspective in terms of how much does this thing cost per day? Although, of course, we charge annually or monthly. Um, this is your daily cost uh, for premium at seven and a half dollars, or six and a half, or six point two uh, for uh, the annual um, when you do it daily. And for standard, it's three point nine or two point nine for the annual. And at seven and a half dollars uh, a day without any discount, that's really a right around twenty two hundred dollars for the year. And if you have trouble allocating that to some of the best technology on the planet for idea generation, which is the most critical component of trading, you might want to rethink your endeavor. I always love saying that because you, you do. You want to, if you're, if this is where, I mean, it's not that you should be frugal in some places, and, uh, but for this kind of tech, this is not where you do it. Okay, next one. We have a podcast, and I love the last podcast. Sean did such a good job. Scott, good editing, obviously, but what a nice way to um, put it put it together. And the guys do a fantastic job. Uh, I myself and Jamie used to do it, but Sean's kind of taken that over. Um, so we need to adjust that slide as well. But please do a search for trade ideas on your podcast search engine. And of course. Although the CEO is banned from all social media by the deep state, we have lots of active accounts um, at Trade Ideas, at QuantBot, at Today Trader. Please we'll like us on Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, shoot us an uh, email at info at trade ideas.com. Uh, if you have any questions, okay, everyone, Scott, I think that's it. Hello? Scott started singing. I, there you I go. <laughs> so I muted him, but sorry, Scott. Welcome back. Come on. You're around. All right. I got uh, excited about the Facebook. Uh, so anyways, uh, any questions at all, shoot them to info at trade-ideas.com. That will get all your questions answered as quickly as possible. And you get an email reminder tomorrow with a link to the playlist 
where you can find the podcast. I mean, the uh, this episode on YouTube. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Brad. Have a great Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye, Take care.